the What to Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Rochelle. Welcome to What to Next podcast. I'm thrilled to be here. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little about yourself. So I am uh, a romance novelist and a food writer. I guess the romance novelist is the the by night job, but by day I work as a freelance food writer for a variety of different magazines and websites about food. Um, And it's funny, I always answer that question, tell me about yourself by saying what I do, but there are other things uh, that are interesting about me. I live in Northern Vermont uh, and I have two adorable corgis who are the loves of my life. I mean, my boyfriend's great too, but the corgis really (laughs) rule. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love, I love it. And so how did you get started with food writing? Were you passionate about food or writing or is just like, kind of like you fall into it? I was passionate about food and writing. Uh, So when I was in college, I, I knew that I wanted to be a writer, but I didn't really know how that would take shape. Um, But I loved to cook and I thought, well, maybe I can marry these two things. Mm -hmm. And this was in the era of food blogs. I don't know if you remember that about 15 years ago when everyone had a food blog. Yeah. Um, including myself. (laughs) And uh, I just thought, you know, a way to make myself stand out from the crowd would be if I actually went to culinary school. So after college, I enrolled in culinary school and did that because I wanted, I wanted to get the street cred, you know, Um, and then I worked in a restaurant for a short period of time. But that was not my strength. I'm a little too soft and um, emotional and tender for restaurant work. Uh, So then I transitioned to, uh, that's when I kind of made the jump. Oh, right. I didn't, I never wanted to work in restaurants. I wanted to write about food. So that's when I started working um, in that industry. I love this. I love the fact that you're I, I had a healthy living blog like I was fit, focused on fitness and like fun stuff and your lifestyle you know it was just, that it, was the era it was the era of oversharing too yeah. you know? <laughs> I was very much of the mindset you know back in my early 20s that okay I'm going to share a recipe that I've created and not tested or anything you know like food like we never tested our recipes but I also had to you know share a story about the date I went on the night before and the crushes that I had it was just very it was all out there (laughs) it was all out there yeah like I remember sharing a lot of things and it like it's as I grow older I become more private about my life and then the other like what I share in the public is very like niche to books and every so often I sprinkle things about my life but it's really rare um that sense of like it has to be all about what I did last night you know it's funny and it's funny you mentioned that that desire to keep more inside or keep more as you get older because relevant to book publishing my first book was a memoir which Mm -hmm. I wrote when I was 24 Five. and mm-hmm. it, it was the best book I could have written at the time yeah and I think there's a lot to love in that book but if I could write it now I would have kept a few more secrets for myself so it's funny looking back at that lens you know we we evolve as writers we so. Do. We do. so how did you end up writing a romance novel ah so I had as I mentioned, I wrote my first book, um, The Call of the Farm, which was a memoir about my year spent living, working, and loving on a small farm in upstate New York. Um, And so I had an agent uh, from that period. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was already involved with my agency, but I kind of just let writing books fall by the wayside because at the time, um, after that book, got published, I started working full-time for Bon Appetit magazine. Okay. So I had, you know, the big full-time fancy New York City 
food writer job, yeah. uh, which took up a lot of my time and mental energy. And I just didn't, didn't feel the pull to write another book. But once I started going freelance, you know, that's when we start to get that little, Ooh, I should take on a new project wheel turning in our brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kept thinking I have to write another nonfiction book because that's what I had written previously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I struggled with that because I didn't want to write another memoir. And as I mentioned, I wanted to keep some secrets. And I don't think that, um, I just like, didn't consider the world of fiction could be open to me. And this is yeah. where our agents come in because my agent suggested, well, it sounds like what you're really good at writing and what you like to write is romance. Maybe you should look into that genre. Yeah. And thus began my education and love <laughs> affair with this genre. All of a sudden I realized I not only have found my people, but I've been missing this for so long and I had no idea. It was just like kiss nothing. I knew this is where I belong. <laughs> I feel that so much because I discovered romance later in life after trying to do all this journey. And I think I discovered romance in 2016, which was like an interesting year for many, many other reasons. And so I remember being like, holy crap, there's a genre that has doesn't have a bigger ending. It has endings that are tightly knit and has together it shows me a plethora of different relationships so I'm not just driving into this toxic relationship there's like healthy relationships people working things out there's opportunities just exploration opportunities to explore who you are as a person you know who you are in this world and so it's like it's an education and then you find a community who is just as passionate about it yeah Yeah. I love that I love what you said about romance being a place to explore and grow and what I think I think all literature can do that but what makes romance special is the framework is always a safe space to do that in you know sometimes literature can jar you and scar you and feel intense romance pushes you and makes you question yourself and and be reflective but you know that you're safe within those boundaries um and that's why I'm drawn to it I love this and so let's talk about Ruby Spencer's risk a year so there should be there's a little bit of food writing there let's (laughs) (laughs) talk to us about Ruby Spencer's journey like what's the elevator page well what I love about Ruby is she I think in some ways she is the classic romance heroine. You know, she has the sun, she's definitely the sunshine trope. She's quirky. We love her for that. But she is a little older than the typical romance heroine. She's in her mid thirties. And what I wanted her to experience was reality versus expectation. And I wanted her to discover what would happen when she decided to start showing up to her life exactly as it was, Mm -hmm. rather than what she dreams it should be like, which is, I think, a problem many of us have. (laughs) (laughs) So when you do show up to your life in a real present way with what is there exactly, it's never perfect but it's often better than you could have imagined because we just don't have the creativity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't think, I think it's like, it's a place of like, if you surrender to your present to that present moment, you're always like safe, secure and all this stuff. And like things unravel in ways that you never thought you'd expect it, but they're the perfect moment for that moment. And they're going to meet your needs at that place that you are. And like, yeah. it may not be what you want, but it might be what you need. And sometimes that's where the magic happens, you know, not when you think your imagine is going to be this way. And it's like, no, your life can be so much funner. <laughs> yes. And, but what's funny is we often don't realize the, the lesson or the, the poignancy of the moment until it's gone and yeah. we re- reflect back on it. Yeah. Um, so I had the benefit of having reflection. Ruby didn't, you know, she was just out there living it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
because she goes to this town in Scotland thinking it's going to be like Outlander. She thinks it's going yeah. to be all, you know, windswept moors and, and cliff views and handsome Scots who immediately fall in love with her. And yeah. it's, you know, it wasn't that exactly, but it was definitely better than that for her. Yeah, <laughs> I love this. And so do we expect more books from you, like more romance books or... Is there, is, there, is there more romance books for you? Are you? Yes, I actually just finished the first draft of my next book. Um, I owe it to my editor uh, in a couple of weeks. So there's, you know, ample time for me to rewrite half a dozen scenes before I send it back in. Uh, that one is about a chef who, a professional chef who moves back to her main hometown for one summer and one summer only. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you like said the set it up or like you have this set expectations and as a writer I'm just gonna turn your life upside down. <laughs> I'm just gonna be a fun game. <laughs> because you know what? My characters do that to me all the time. So I'm going to give it right back to them. <laughs> like, Listen, you think you run the show. I run the show. Yeah. <laughs> we all know it's actually our characters who run the show. Yeah. Though. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> awesome. So let's chat some book recommendations. Do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up? I do. Um, and this is not in the romance genre. Yep. But uh, because I'm also a food writer, I had a couple of food writer yes. books to recommend. Um, my first is a book called Cookies by, I'm going to just butcher his last name, Jesse Sizerwick. I There's a lot of Zs and Cs in there and I don't know what to do with them. Uh, but we worked uh, at the same um food writing website the kitchen and so he does recipe development there and food styling but wrote an entire book about cookies <laughs> and they are the best cookie recipes I have ever tried a lot of them you don't even need a stand mixer yeah. which that's the challenge right I want cookies it's 2 p.m I'm not about to break out every bowl in my kitchen they're yeah. easy um, all I have to say is red wine brownie cookies and sweet potato snickerdoodles, totally delicious. Um, so that would be like a big go-to cookbook for me. I use it all the time. Which is you're actually, you're speaking my language because I told my friend, I am in room, but like going back to baking, trying to fall in love with it. And I was like, I cannot bake cakes and breads and stuff like that because I live by myself. So I need something that's like a little bit more manual. And I was like, I should do a cookie project where I just like bake a cookie like every other week and like freeze up the dough and all those different things. And so you just gave me the actual book that I can actually follow. It's fate. And the thing with cookies too, you nailed it on the head. When I make cookies, I will make the batter, yes. form it into the, the balls and yeah. then freeze half of them, you know, because yeah. it's like nobody needs three dozen cookies lying around <laughs> in the house yeah. or anything. I don't I don't um, so but then you have cookies at a moment's notice you know yeah. a week later you want cookies and there's just all these and there's cookies. a batter yeah you're like thank you past me I'm patting myself on the back for yeah. listeners um so that would be definitely a, a book I recommend and um I also uh this is not romance, but I just, ha this book has stayed with me and I have to recommend it. I just read George Saunders' uh, mm -hmm. most recent book of short stories called Liberation Day. Mm -hmm. uh, George Saunders, for folks who don't know, is a short story writer, most typically, and he teaches um, writing at Syracuse University, and I grew up in Syracuse, so I feel a little, you know, sense I went to Syracuse. <laughs> I, Wait, you did? I did. I went to Syracuse. Yes. I went from Puerto Rico to Syracuse thinking the pictures look really pretty in the snow. I did not know how much snow was gonna I was gonna get for four years. Yes. And it's not just the snow in Syracuse that will get you, it's the gray. Yes. Those are very gray there. But I love Syracuse fiercely and I will defend it to the end. So anyone from Syracuse is, or yeah. has a connection to Syracuse, if I'm at the gym and I see someone wearing a Syracuse sweatshirt or something, I'll go up to them and say, 
did you go to Syracuse? Are you from there? What's your favorite neighborhood? You know, where did like? I miss the Wegmans. Like it was like oh, like I was telling because I live in New York City, so the Wegmans open up in New York, Manhattan. I was like, it's still not the same as the one in Syracuse. And I used to go to tribe to cheese Rochester and Buffalo, and like and the Finger Lakes and Cornell. And it's like it's a whole vibe, like upstate vibe. It is such a vibe. Um. But George Saunders actually yeah. captures some of that. There's, I don't know, this is kind of silly. I might be getting a little too deep cut here. But in Syracuse, there's a furniture store called Dunk and Bright. Yes. And so you know it. And in March, they changed the name of their furniture store to O'Dunk and O'Bright. Like, you know, Irish. Oh, like, okay. Dunk and O'Bright. Um, and in his George Saunders' most recent book of short stories, he talks about a uh, an appliance store named Domini's that changes their name to O Domini's in March. And I was like, I see you, George Saunders. I know what you're doing, Syracuse. But anyway, the book is just full of um, like mildly dystopian stories mm. that, which is normally not my genre. I don't yeah. like to be, have my feathers ruffled in that way, but there's so much tenderness and humor and love in the stories too that they just shook me to my core and I can't stop thinking about them so oh my gosh I love this I'm definitely gonna pick it up because I'm like the service connection it's it's a 20 yeah. year old connection but it's it's a good one you know when once you've been a Syracusean you're always a Syracusean yeah <laughs> yeah and I have a question what woman's now was so gateway like for you oh um Denise Williams, How to Fail at Flirting. <laughs> I, so we share an agent, our agent yeah. is both Sharon Pelletier. And uh, I just, you know, I had read some books in the genre, but was not widely read. And once I realized, I think this is a genre I might want to hang out in, uh, I asked my agent for recommendations. And then she said, you have to read Denise. And so when I picked up How to Fail at Flirting, I, no joke, was absolutely laughing out loud. I was reading some of their, the her characters always have such good banter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, reading their interactions with a hand over my mouth, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And I just, her stories have it all. They're funny, they're sexy, there's uh, growth in the characters. And it, it made me realize that they're so much potential in this yeah. genre like your stories can have it all um and I was just like I need to write books that are as sassy and funny as hers it just <laughs> I mean I'm a little more um I would say my writing style is a little more cozy and soft whereas yeah. hers is a little more sassy and witty um but I just man she is such an inspiration she's so good <laughs> She's really good. So, and that's a great book to start. Like, it's a great gateway drug. Like, you know, sometimes like treat her as that, you know, yeah. like just to get yourself into this genre and be like, oh my gosh, there's more to come. But yes. Yeah. And I do think that that book in particular is great for people who might not consider themselves romance readers. Yeah. They might not, you know, say, oh yeah, I love romance. I would, you know, I'm, I pick up romance at the library, but if you handed that book to anyone who likes to read, they would be into it. So yeah, it's perfect. She's a star. I love this. Okay, Rochelle, tell us where you can find you online. What's up? Tell us where you can find you online. So um, oh, yeah. Uh, so I am old and I will never be on Snapchat chat <laughs> I will never be on TikTok I am just this is the hill I'm going to die on but you can definitely find me on Instagram and Twitter my Instagram handle is just at Rochelle Bilo so it's just my name and then my Twitter handle is that flipped around so it's Bilo Rochelle just to make things confusing um and uh if you read food and wine if you read uh the Kitchen, The Spruce Eats, all recipes. Uh, I write for all of those places about food. I cover cooking tips and uh, I test equipment 
for the kitchen, which is really fun. I currently have seven toaster ovens in my kitchen right now. I'm testing those for serious eats. Um, so there is a lot of uh, frozen pizza and chicken wings in my future. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but those are the best places to find me. And you you can always drop a line. Um, I have a contact form on my website, which is rochellebilowriting.com. You can always find me there. Awesome. Thank you, Rochelle, for a great interview. Thank you. I had a blast. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Remix podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro FM for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the US. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.